Howdy, everybody. Welcome to Talking Sense, episode number 59. My name's Kenneth Frost. I'm Carlos. And we're kind of winging it today. We've got no Sam, no Sam in <laughs> sight. <laughs> no Billy Bob. But we're keeping it going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone's getting ready for the holidays, so uh, things around Centaur are kind of all in the Christmas New uh, Thanksgiving chaos, <laughs> but uh, we're still here to bring you some good Scenty goodness. So first off, we'd like to say uh, thank you for all our Patreon supporters. Uh, I believe this is an odd-numbered episode, so this one will be public be available for everybody to see but if you'd like to get every other episode the patreon exclusive you can uh, check us out on that website and sign up uh, also centaur the spot to get all of your synthesizer parts needs uh, you were located here in new braunfels texas uh, out in the hill country and you know it, it's always cool when people come in and they've never heard of us we get to show them the showroom but then I always tell people, you know, at our heart, we're a parts company. So if you have a broken key, you need a power supply, replacement display, you know, we're, we're the folks to see. We got what you need. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time. Most of the yeah. time. <laughs> we try really hard. We try to not break hearts. But. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So we recently reached 50,000 subscribers and uh, yes. our views, 50,000 views on our latest uh, String Machine episode which was really great. We put a lot of hard work and effort into it. If it's something you haven't seen, I definitely check it out. You know, I'd like to say a lot of what we do around here is preservation of electronic arts. And we put a lot of history, a lot of technical info, but we also made it really fun. Um, it was a really fun episode to shoot. So if you haven't I'm, seen it, check it out. I dug it. I, I was not at Centaur at the time. So it was kind of a, a pleasant little surprise for me. I was like, oh, the, Mm -hmm. awesome keyboard store and they got a great video channel with historical informative but like you said also fun videos so check it out so today i wanted i've actually been dying to do this topic for a while now and um, i thought it'd be really neat to maybe go over using synthesizers hardware synthesizers as external effects processors um, and this really stemmed from a while back we had a I believe it was a Multivox MX202, and it was a tape machine, a tape delay that had sound down sound capabilities, and uh, I was just absolutely blown away by the way that it sounds. Um, as far as, you know, I think I've said this time and time again, but probably one of my favorite sounds in the world is a Rhodes running through a tape echo. Mm. I mean, <laughs> there's really nothing <laughs> like it. I might be a synthesizer, you know, guy at heart, but that, that sound is really hard to beat. And so I was really sad, you know, when we sold it, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is, you know, that's just the thing that happens in the showroom. We get pieces that come and go. And uh, I was really missing just that luscious, gritty tape echo. And we still had the roads. And I was thinking, what is the way that I can emulate this? How can I make this happen? without having a tape echo. If only this Rhodes was a synthesizer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I got to thinking, because the, the Moog Matriarch was sitting right above it, and it's a totally semi-modular synth. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was like Wayne's World with the white guitar. Yeah. <laughs> and it has a great stereo delay, and you have all the patch points to inject that signal into the stereo delay, but on top of that, you have the added benefit of being over to overdrive the filter and to play with the filter. Um, now, I, would, I will say uh, it is a little confusing to set up. There's a thousand different ways you can route it and plug that. Like just setting this up here, we've unplugged and plugged things in about 10 different ways. But uh, what do we got going on here right now? So, so no MIDI anymore. No, we no, no. <laughs> we, we, we were using MIDI at, at, at a certain point, and that was really fun to play around with. And so the, the important thing is just to, you know, to experiment. And I wouldn't say there isn't necessarily a wrong way to do it, but you do need to be aware of the limitations of your machine. Um, you know, a synthesizer, as we've talked about before, has a sound source, a filter, envelopes, and a VCA. And in order for this, you know, to be an efficient setup, that VCA is gonna have to be open. Um, and there are a multitude of keyboards that you could do this with. Um, and a lot of them 
will have, and, and the, they really hit the nail on the head with this, but it's just the flip of a switch. And you, you hit this toggle, and then the VCA is in drone mode, and then all incoming audio will pass through. So if you're, if you're messing around and you're not hearing anything, um, it's good to sometimes just to hit the keys and then see, yeah, and see, see if you can get audio to pass through. And uh, that, that's a good spot to, to start troubleshooting. Yeah, so right now we've got the Korg Op 6, just the audio running straight to here, and then also this TR6S drum machine running through. Earlier we had audio from the Op 6 running through here, but then we were also controlling the Op 6 yeah, with, with this via MIDI. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like we were pretty much bypassing the sound source mm -hmm. from the Matriarch and using the Korg in, in place of it, yeah. where we're still controlling it with this keyboard, we're still running it through all these filters mm -hmm. and stuff, but the sound is only coming from here. Now we're just running the sound through. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that's another important thing is, is right now in my mixing section, I have all of my oscillators turned down. Because of course, if, if Kenneth was playing the Ob6 and I had my oscillators turned up and I'm in drone mode on the VCA, you know, it would just, it would blast right through. <laughs> but fortunately, uh, and, and then also, you know, we've talked about this before that underneath a semi-modular synthesizer, there are normalized connections, which just means connections that you don't have to patch. So patching in directly to the filter breaks that normalization um, and helps with not having oscillator bleed. And you know the, the other part of this too is, is, is just kind of thinking outside of the box and trying to get new sounds and be creative. Just seeing what happens. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it, it's like a DX7, great synthesizer, oh, yeah. no filter on it. No filter. So it's like, well, what, what are some ways that we can get this digital analog hybrid going using the tools that we have at our disposal. Um, so if you want to just play some notes. So as I'm turning the cutoff, that's actually affecting the sound that's coming through. I can increase the resonance. You'll get a little bit of that wah. But then the cool thing is, so you got that great stereo delay with the feedback. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, so it, it's, you know, just I mean, I, I just, I love discovering new sounds, you know? And I think with the setup like this, I mean, really the sky's the limit. And, and you, can, you can just turn knobs to your heart's content and you're always gonna find something new. And, and this also is, you know, a case where maybe the sum of two parts is, 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 is greater than the whole because some of the limitations of the matriarch you're breaking out of now, you know, whereas you had four note polyphony before, I mean, I don't even know what the op six has off the top of my head, but it's a lot more than four. <laughs> yeah, there's kind of endless possibilities and you can really discover what a synthesizer is as an instrument. I was watching a, uh, it was a talk with Mr. Moog, Mr. Oberheim and Mr. Lin and they were talking about uh, just with each of them, the person had asked, what do you feel like is the most misunderstood thing with the uh, creations that you've created? And I think it was uh, Mr. Oberheim said that he was really surprised that when they started making synthesizers and like as the 80s kind of went along, he was surprised by how many musicians just used synthesizers to recreate sounds that they didn't have in terms of horns or strings and stuff like that. And that those kind of the presets like on a DX7 or something <laughs> yeah. like that kind of overpowered and overshadowed the capabilities of a synthesizer as a synthesizer. So doing this sort of thing, you really, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's its own beast. Mm -hmm. Um, how about how about a, we hear some of this drum machine? Yeah, let's get it going. So 
So this is a uh, Roland TR6S with Lindrum samples. And it's just such a great way. I love that. I love that dark tone. Yeah. That that real dark just. And then you can kind of you can kind of get that that resonance where it starts to get real squelchy. And, and, and I mean, the, the, the thing that I'm really enjoying right off the bat is just the tactile experience of it. Definitely. And that's like, I, I'm all about having hands on control over things like you can do effects and different things right in the box. But it's not like if this was the TR8S, for example, and I had separate outputs for each instrument, we could keep the drum machine clean but just have the symbols running through something like this and do some weird effect like the again the possibilities are just endless so yeah and, and that's uh you know that's kind of the 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 joy of the the semi-modular nature of certain synthesizers is not only seeing where those physical connections are made but then it's like uh it's kind of like you get little light bulbs that start going off. Little happy accidents. And then you're, you're like, oh, well, well, well what, what if I did this? Or what if I did that? So like right now where I was, um, you know, kind of having fun turning all of the knobs. Well, I have envelopes and LFOs at my disposal that I could totally make use of. So uh, maybe we'll play, play a, um, yeah, a drum pattern. And then you can, you can play a little bit behind that. And while you're doing that, I'll just do some patching. I already have uh, one of my LFOs going out to an attenuator um, and to a molt. So this will be really useful in dialing in um, certain tones and timbres. Um, and maybe we'll start real soft and then take things to the extreme <laughs> and see where they get. Thank you. 
Yeah, so just, I mean... We got lost. Just yeah, yeah. I could, <laughs> I, could, I could literally do that for hours. And, and, and really, there wasn't... I didn't really take it to too many of the extremes, but, you know, you could get into a situation, you know, where you... Let's say you wanted to audio rate, modulate the filter cutoff as you're playing. And uh, one thing that I love is you can kind of get into that ring mod territory where it's like real metallic. And um, it, it doesn't sound great all of the time. Yeah, it's getting nasty. <laughs> yeah. Um, but definitely, you know, a little sprinkle here and there. Um, definitely something I enjoyed. And there's so much more you, like, you can do anything mm -hmm. through like we're we're kind of using synthesizers through other synthesizers yeah. here even with the drum machine but like i know uh 1967 the doors strange days they ran uh jim morrison's vocal through one of those big wall-sized moogs and that's how he got the weird strange <laughs> days kind of mm -hmm. vibe and then they slapped a delay on there and or uh Heroes, David Bowie, mm -hmm. Robert Fripp. I think they it was. It was a. I looked this up. It was a voltage controlled studio. VCS by oh, EMS. I, I'll just shut up and take my money. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> if you listen to the song Heroes by David Bowie, there's like a tick, 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 kind of noise, and it sounds like a synth or something, mm -hmm. but it's actually a guitar being ran through one of those little voltage controlled studios. So. They've, I'm sure there's tons and tons of examples of artists doing this over the years, but uh, it is kind of an underutilized tool, I feel like. Mm -hmm. People get a synth and they're just like, yeah, let's do it. But running other stuff through the synthesizer, yeah, that's the key. And and, and it's really the, the world is your oyster. Yeah. You know, because uh, I'm just such a huge fan of sampling, you know, so it's like this is totally a case where you can mangle audio before it even reaches the sample yes. and then transpose it and get more grit, get more texture, you know, just extrapolate sounds. Um, and in you, when you were talking right now, the, the one thing that popped in my head, probably one of my favorite sounds in the world is a drum machine being ran through a vocoder. Yes, <laughs> yes. I actually, I watched the Talking Sense episode oh. where you talked about that and I was yeah. like, why have I never <laughs> thought of that? That sounds awesome. So I yeah. definitely want to do that on a song soon yeah yeah and and we got some vocoders here in the showroom so that might have to be uh something that we experiment with do a pretty daft soon. punk episode or something <laughs> yeah. yeah um do you do you have any questions you know as an artist you know as far as you know how we set this up or was there anything that you found particularly difficult during this process i mean i've never personally i don't think on any like I've used outside effects, pro like Eventide, mm -hmm. H9000s and stuff like that, or H3000, I can't remember which <laughs> one. But uh, I've never been a modular guy and I've never ran something through a synth to my knowledge. I've understood the concept. I get what's going on here. Mm -hmm. I'd really have to sit down and like spend a couple hours digging into it. But, yeah, like uh, well, I mean, we were we were scratching our heads. Yeah, we were figuring like, some stuff out earlier because it, it everything worked totally fine. Of course, earlier in the day, and then we all took about an hour break and then regrouped, and then yeah. it was like, oh, why isn't uh -oh. any of this working? <laughs> um, and I think a lot of it was just you know not understanding that going directly into the filter was breaking a normalization happening before the mixer and then like Luke pointed out the polyphony of the Moog um, because we would get sound coming through we were basically trying to use the the mixing section which worked to a certain extent there was some sort of triggering happening yeah, though, from yeah. the MIDI. but uh, yeah just recently actually I got to play an MS-20 for the first time and that's kind of I guess my mm -hmm. first really dipping my toes into modular. I really enjoyed it. And again, like I understand the concept and I get what's happening, but it is the kind of thing where you're gonna have to spend some time hands on just like, let's say you've got three components that like, if you change the order of what, mm -hmm. like they, things completely changed. So you gotta just figure out what you wanna do, figure out how to get there, or just start doing stuff and be pleasantly surprised by the happy accidents. 
Yeah, and, and, and really, you know, the whole idea is just to experiment. And, you know, I understand the matriarch is, is a little bit more comprehensive as far as being a semi-modular synth, but there's a lot of other synthesizers that offer the same functionality, such as, I believe, you know, the, the mini logs um, have the audio inputs. Uh, I know the base station 2 does. Um, I think my circuit mono station, the MS-20 definitely has yeah. um, an audio input. So, or I've got uh, the TR-8, the first TR-8 drum machine also has like a side chaining function with an audio oh. in. So you can, you can just have a long bass note held out, run it through the drum machine and then select the steps that you want it to pop up and the different effects that you want to affect it. So. It's kind of it's in the same ballpark for no, sure. No, definitely get some definitely. nice wub wub wubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That that was a really good thing to bring up. Side chaining. I'm definitely a real big fan of side chaining, and I've I've definitely gotten you know side chaining esque feels from my modular, um, you know, just by inverting waveforms and then sending that to the filter. Um, so it's something I'm, I'm excited to mess around with. I think a lot of people use, I may be wrong completely, but uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people, especially like in the electronic world of music, will use side chaining to keep from like a kick drum and your low subby bass from like muddying each other mm -hmm. up. So it kind of like will drop in and out at mm -hmm. the right spot so that you're not, you don't have just a bunch of bass that you don't <laughs> want slapping yeah. you across the face. Right, that doesn't sound too terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad you know that we were able to do this today. Do a little bit of experimenting. Uh, I really hope this inspires people out there just to you know to just to try new things. Get um, weird with it. Get weird with it. And, and you know that there, there's really like I'm saying. You know, I I, I feel like sometimes people think that. Um, the financial aspect of synthesizers and sound production can be like cost prohibitive, but you know, you could replace this op six with your DAW and you can run sound out of a free VST into an MS 20 mini and add new life to it. Those little Korg Volkas Korg that Vol series. Yeah, exactly. Those things are crazy. Exactly. It, 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 at the end of the day, it's, it's just all signal and audio. Yeah. A lot of it comes down to like, like we were talking about earlier, the tactical feeling. It's mm -hmm. like if you want a big synth with a bunch <laughs> of knobs on it. Yeah. yeah, but you can accomplish the same thing with a lot more budget friendly options. Definitely, definitely. But I like to touch it with my hands. <laughs> yeah. And and one thing that, that we didn't really do, but I'm sure it would be loads of fun, but actually modulating the parameters on the op six as they're yeah. being fed into the into the uh, the matriarch. You know, so I, one, one thing I'm a real big fan of um, is like playing with the coarse tuning, especially when it's like digitally in step because <laughs> you get the you get that real glitchy that break up. Yeah, yeah. where it just kind of jumps. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, well, I think on that note, we'll grab the mod wheel and say <laughs> modulator. modulator. <laughs>